many world interpretation of Israeli and Anakid. That's the title of the show, and um, you know the many world interpretation comes from the the quantum uh, concept of how things work at a quantum level, which is just operates in such a different kind of paradoxical kind of level to what we consider real or exact or what's happening in the world and the rules don't apply. So it, it's a very handy concept to just take and to apply it to work because it gives you the freedom to invent, to restore meaning on stuff, to discard meaning on other things, just rob, uh, like an allergist, you're just like a magpie gathering up things, kind of mashing it together in the kind of food processor in your head and then spewing them out again. So the work is, there's 11 works in the show. They, they work on a macro and a micro level. There's one large painting. The rest of the paintings tend to be quite small and intense. The images, um, they're montaged together. There's many, many different layers. This painting is called Minion Man. And within Minion Man, you've got lots of different images brought together. Uh, in particular, there's a, a diagram and it's done with kind of dried out blue oil paint and the paintbrush was dragged along the surface to make it look like crayon. And this is an image taken of Brilliant Zone, which ties in with the title of the exhibition. So this is a three-dimensional diagram of it and it's a kind of an attempt to, to describe the momentum of a particle. And just as I said, the rules are at a quantum level, they just don't, they're not the same type of rules. It's nearly counterintuitive. They, they don't make sense to our kind of experiential existence in this world of how things operate. I do find it very interesting because when you're working on um, a canvas, you're trying to create a three-dimensional space. And this is a, like an, an alternative world. There's my son, Mokdara, and he's, he's not a bit happy standing in this uh, painting. And he's holding his minion balloon. The minion balloon is a, a, like a vanitas symbol. You know, the image will be always linked with the moment of time when the kind of Despicable Me kind of movies came out and they were just everywhere, these giant minions with eyes. And he's looking back, his, the minion balloon is gazing back at my son who's gazing out at the painting, not a bit happy. He's holding his staff, which he calls his wizard stick, which mirrors the staff in the wayfarer's hand. Um, and it's from a foosball. And behind him is a piece of cloth which looks as if it's floating on the painting, but that, that kind of makes real the non-three-dimensionality, the non-space aspect of the painting, because it is just a flat space, it's like a heropeter. And it's superimposed onto a Bosch painting, Wayfair. And Bosch was very well known for his depictions of human life, of its misery, its toil, what was going on. In many of the works I include um, drawings, of children's work and I don't see a hierarchy among uh, paintings or drawings. I think the child's drawing is just as valuable as an old master, maybe not in monetary terms but certainly the value we can get out of it. But they're not valued, you know, usually they're placed on a fridge, they last for a few days, they disappear, they're like a momentum mori of somebody's life and they can only be produced at a certain time in your life because otherwise it's a kind of a false reproduction of them. I often use botanical specimens and there are different varieties. Sometimes I'm attracted to something like tulips or carnations. And tulips have an obvious place in art history, like they have a kind of a hierarchy. And even if you think of Dutch uh, flower paintings, which people assume are the preserve of women, these are not just the preserve of women, these are not genteel paintings. These are paintings about power, they're paintings about control. Like when they were produced, the world was opening up, they felt they had control over the world, that they, you know, they were collecting uh, specimens, taxonomy. Within some of the compositions, um, tubes of paint appear, and they were a little bit like time travellers, they, they point to the materiality of how paintings are made. Within the studio I would collect, I collect lots of objects, I collect images, I kind of collect the debris of life, broken toys, different stuff like that, and they all come together and kind of mismash together to create new things within, um, you know, within my little kind of squares of narrative.